Hello everyone, I am Susindar Gulasekaran, founder of Suramate. I am here to talk about testing OFDMA benefits. And as you can see in the picture here, we are going to compare the performance of single user against OFDMA. Let's see which one is better. Before we get into actual uh, testing of OFDMA, first let us understand what is the gains of OFDMA in theory, in what scenario it will happen. Secondly, what is the right metric to measure to assess whether there is gain or not. And thirdly, do we have the right tool set to make all those measurements, right? So let's start with the theory, a little bit of motivation for why OFDMA. So here is a plot of collision probability with respect to number of devices contending to transmit for Wi-Fi. So assuming uh, you have 10 or more devices, as you can see from the plot, we are going to experience a collision probability in excess of 20%, right? And what happens in Wi-Fi whenever a collision uh, is encountered is that three things happen. First point, there is wasted airtime. Second point, whenever there is a collision, the rate adaptation algorithm tends to react to that collision by reducing the data rate. This definitely brings down the performance further. And thirdly, there is a drain on the battery life of the client devices. So clearly, when you have a lot of clients connected to an access point, especially running uplink traffic, collisions are going to become a significant uh, factor that you know determines the performance and uh, also it has implications on the battery life. So is OFDMA a solution? I mean, it, this was proposed as a solution in Wi-Fi 6, right, OFDMA. There are other solutions like target wake time as well, but today our focus is OFDMA. So what is the idea here? So if we had a lot of clients connected to an AP sending uplink traffic, the way the transmissions happen on the air is each client has to contend for the medium and then get an acknowledgement back from the AP and then you know another client contends for the medium and then gets back an AP, uh, gets back an ACK and this goes on, right? So th there is no predetermined schedule here. So every time it is basically a battle, right? So there can be uh, collisions that happen in the in this uh, sequence of events and there will be wastage of airtime, right? So this is how the single user approach works. If we use OFDMA, the AP starts by sending a basic trigger frame and in the basic trigger frame, the AP specifies a list of clients which can participate in a triggered uplink. So, and all those clients which have been specified in the basic trigger can respond to the basic trigger with the trigger based PPDU and here they can send their uplink data. And this is done using resource units or RUs, right? And since all the resource units are orthogonal, they don't interfere with each other. So all of them can be transmitted simultaneously. And then the AP can send back a multi-star block hack, right? So this is, you know, uh, one block hack that aggregates the block hack of all the clients, right? So this is a clearly a much more efficient way of, uh, you know, handling uplink traffic, right? First of all, we are not incurring the random back of overhead every time, as in the single user case, there is a random back of overhead for every transmission. And secondly, there is a uh, five header overhead in each of these uh, PPDUs, which is also an overhead. So in the case of OFDMA, we are avoiding all those five header overheads and then we are avoiding that multiple random back of overhead. So clearly this should have been a much uh, efficient solution, right? But there are challenges. So here is the RU plan in the case of 80 megahertz. This is how the RU plan is uh, described in the Wi-Fi 6 standard. So the challenges are definitely there. So first of all, uh, there are several, I would say, uh, not so good, uh, you know, uh, design uh, aspects of OFDMA in the standard. The first among them, I would say, is this constraint of one client can be assigned only one resource unit or one multiple RU unit. So, I mean, the, the word multiple RU gives you the impression that you can assign multiple RUs to a client, but that's not actually correct. You can assign only one MRU uh, or RU to a client, right? So, uh, so these are the RU assignment uh, constraints that we have, right? And the AP has to work within these constraints. So remember, all these RU assignments are specified in this basic trigger frame, right? So, what is the problem of having this constraint, uh, you know, in terms of assignment is that it's going to complicate the scheduling algorithm, right? The complexity of the RU allocation algorithm is going to be uh, significantly high, and whether the access point really has the memory and the compute resources to do all those calculations and computations in a, such a uh, you know limited time, right? Because it has to decide on this RU allocation pretty much uh, you know very quickly, right? Otherwise, it's going to be wasting airtime just sitting on sitting doing computations, right? Now, the other challenge is 
whenever we assign you know multiple rus right basically we are splitting up this 80 megahertz into smaller chunks of bandwidth and assigning them there are so called null tones or null subcarriers that are introduced okay this is as per the ru plan so the more you subdivide the 80 megahertz and put and make it smaller and smaller chunks we will be losing a lot of subcarriers to these null subcarriers which can be used for sending data so null tones reduce the data rate anywhere you know uh, actually from 5% to 18% but the more typical number is like 12 to 18% okay so this is uh, a significant you know limiting factor of uh, OFDMA so that uh, when we start itself it's OFDMA starts with this 12% to 18% loss compared to single user right so in which case OFDMA will be beneficial only if the gains uh, are exceeding that 18% loss right so to get a net gain we have to compensate for this loss then thirdly we have to get buffer status reports from the clients right so you know unless the ap knows the buffer status from all the clients accurately it will not be able to schedule for the clients correctly so the good thing is the buffer status reports uh, do not have to occupy a lot of airtime because they are not separate frames these buffer status reports can be included in the mac header of any uplink frame right uh, in the cost control or in the hd control fields uh, these can be included right so it doesn't incur separate frame overhead but it can be piggybacked on existing uplink frames but the point is clients have to provide this information if the clients do not provide this information then the ap will not be able to schedule properly right so these are all the you know uh, pros and cons of the ofdma so let's do some calculation to understand in what scenario ofdma will have gain so first scenario we're going to take is a simple 20 megahertz bandwidth you know ap is in 20 megahertz bandwidth let us assume the clients are all you know um, using an mcs of 7 right and the let's assume that the acts are also obtained using ofdma right so let's assume the mcs for the acts is like mcs 3 let's assume the number of users is four users so 80 um, 20 megahertz is split uh, between four users so that can be done with uh, ru size 52 so we can assign ru 52 to each of the four clients and you know uh, we can transmit ofdma so let's for the purpose of calculation assume that the per user queue size is about 20000 bytes so basically there is 20000 bytes of traffic to be uh, sent by each of these clients right now if we send this as single user what will happen is you know as i showed in the in this picture there's going to be four transmissions four SUP video transmissions which means four times we will incur the random backup overhead and then four times we will incur the five header overhead right so which is kind of in indicated in this plot here where i have calculated the total airtime required to send all this uh, uh, you know payload to the ap right and uh, i've split that total airtime into three parts one is the time incurred doing random backup which is the blue color and the time incurred to send the uh, data this includes the five header overhead as well as the payload data and then finally the uh, orange color is for the ACK, right this is the airtime occupied by the acts remember in single user case uh, in the su uh, strategy we have to send four different act frames right whereas in the ofdma case these all are consolidated into this multi-star block act right so if you look at it uh, in this case ofdma in total consumes more airtime here and why is that because the pink portion that is the data portion consumes a significantly higher air uh, airtime because the ofdma data rate is lower than the single user data rate so this is because of the null tones right so in this case despite having a significant savings on the back off portion right there is a blue color you can see there is definitely savings here despite those savings the ofdma is consuming more total airtime compared to the single user in this case ofdma gain turns out to be negative so clearly this is the large payload airtime scenario right where the ofdma consumes more total airtime and the gains are negative now let's look at the small payload airtime scenario and for that example i'm going to make uh, one small change instead of 20 megahertz bandwidth let us assume 80 megahertz bandwidth for the access point right so which means the data rates are now four times uh, higher which means for the same payload which is 20,000 bytes per user the payload airtime is going to uh, shrink right it's going to be uh, smaller right so we will be having a small payload airtime scenario and uh, in this case instead of ru52 we can use ru242 for each of the users right and in this case if you repeat the calculations we see that ofdma in this case consumes significantly lesser airtime compared to single user right single user is taking about you know 1750 microseconds whereas ofdma takes only about 1300 microseconds right now this is despite the reduced ofdma data rate right compared to single user because of the null tones overhead right still the gains are positive right so in the small payload airtime scenario ofdma is definitely beneficial right now note that i have not even considered the savings that we get uh, because of reduced collisions right so if you add the savings that you get in, in terms of airtime because of reduced collisions the gain will be even more than what is showcased here right so and if you uh, you know 
have even higher bandwidth like 160 megahertz bandwidth or 320 megahertz bandwidth the OFDMA gains are likely to be even higher because you are you are basically entering a territory where the payload is like significantly smaller and the phi header starts to become uh, you know a dominating factor uh, in the airtime calculations right another point is as you increase the number of users right we will have more OFDMA gain that is because the collisions become a significant or dominating factor so the more users that you have you know OFDMA will tend to show much higher gains okay so now we understand the OFDMA gains in theory, in what scenario we will see the gains, right? So what is the right metric to capture all these gains? So clearly from all these calculations, we can see that airtime, that is the total airtime consumed, looks like one of the good metrics to capture the OFDMA gains, right? So note that airtime is the right metric. I think in my opinion, airtime is a better metric. Uh, you know, I know some uh, previous uh, testing by various companies has used latency instead of airtime but i think you know airtime is a much more uh, powerful way to showcase the benefits if you look at latency right latency depends on a lot of factors right if you look at end to end latency there is scheduling latency software uh, also takes some cpu cycles and then there's there's queuing latency so i think showing gains in terms of uh, you know latency in ofdma is a little bit challenging but showing gains in terms of airtime should be much uh, simpler and it's very straightforward right uh, as we can see in theory right again this is all in theory now let's look at the practical challenges of demonstrating that airtime advantage of ofdma so how to test the OFDMA benefit? So clearly the test case should be that we run simultaneous uh, uplink traffic from multiple clients, right? And we should be having the small payload airtime scenario, right? So we should have low uplink traffic to simulate this or create the small payload airtime scenario. And we should have multiple OFDMA capable clients connected to the AP and sending uplink traffic. So that's the test case. Now, what should be the metric that we measure, right? So the metric should be, as we discussed, we should be measuring the total airtime utilized, right? And we should compare that, uh, you know, for OFDMA disabled versus OFDMA enabled on the AP. So hopefully we have a knob, enable, disable knob, on the AP where we can enable or disable the OFDMA and make this comparison. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward again in theory, right? So let's look at the practical challenges now, right? So first of all, it is complicated to measure the utilized airtime, okay? Because there is all this interframe spacing, random back off, act time and all these things. So, uh, you know, it's difficult to kind of measure the total airtime utilized, you know, including all this interframe spacing, random back off, act time and all, right? So what is the alternative? How about we measure unused airtime instead of measuring the utilized airtime? Right? Maybe measuring the unused airtime is simpler compared to measuring the total airtime. Right? So that sounds like a good idea. But again, how do you measure this unused airtime? Right? Now, there are no off-the-shelf test tools that are available on the market today, at least to my knowledge, to measure the unused airtime. Okay? But we do have a lot of tools to measure throughput. Right? For example, Candela itself has uh, several tools you know, to help us measure the throughput. Right? And there are many other vendors today which are providing tools to measure the throughput. So what if we can convert the unused airtime into an equivalent throughput and then make it a throughput measurement exercise, right? If we can successfully do this conversion, right? Then we can use the throughput test tools to kind of infer the unused airtime, right? So that's the key idea of this uh, presentation, right? The solution or my proposal to how to do that is introduce another non-OFDMA client into the mix and run up unlimited uplink traffic on it. So basically, you have a bunch of OFDMA capable clients, right, which are uh, going to be served with OFDMA and then introduce another non-OFDMA client. And on that client, we should run unlimited traffic on it. To the OFDMA clients, we should be running that small, small payload airtime, right? So we should have low uplink traffic. And then on the non-OFDMA client, we should have unlimited uplink traffic, which means any unused airtime, which is left over by the OFDMA capable clients will be utilized by this non-OFDMA client, right? Which means the throughput that this non-OFDMA client achieves is a direct measure of the unused airtime, right? So here we got a, a nice method where we can kind of indirectly measure the unused airtime by measuring the throughput of this non-OFDMA client. So that is the key idea of this presentation, right? And, you know, hopefully you got the, uh, you know, uh, the idea here. Now let's go to the test results. So uh, here is my proposal, but we also went, went one step further and uh, I'm going to present some results also that have been captured using this uh, idea presented here. And for this, uh, I should thank, uh, you know, Candela Technologies because uh, Srisha uh, along with her team in Candela helped do this testing as per uh, the test case that I described uh, and this was done in a very short notice so thank you uh, thanks to uh, Shisha and her team and also Sita Rama sir for uh, you know helping and supporting in this exercise so here are the test results so by the way this is all uh, you know Shisha put together all this so thanks to her so here is the test uh, topology okay 
and we can see 15 clients here so totally we had 15 clients uh, a mix of several types of OFDMA capable, capable clients uh, mostly the B200 which is the Intel B200 which is a Wi-Fi 7 and then there was a AX210 which is a Wi-Fi 6E and then there's a Samsung Galaxy S20 which is Wi-Fi 6 okay so a mix of Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 devices and uh, there is also a 11 AC client in the mix so this is the non OFDMA capable client that uh, we used so this will not participate in the OFDMA, right? And we are going to run unlimited uplink traffic on this 11AC client. Whereas with the remaining 14 clients, we will be running very little traffic. In particular, we are going to be running one Mbps traffic, uh, uplink traffic for all the 14 clients. So, so 14 Mbps in total, right? So one Mbps each. So to totally 14 Mbps in total across the 14 clients, right? Now the AP that we used, okay. So here is a test bed image, okay. So this is how the setup was put together. So all the clients were at short range uh, from the AP, right? So it was all inside a, uh, a shield room, right? Now, uh, here is the details of the clients, right? And we've also uh, provided the driver version that was used uh, for the Intel uh, B200, right? And here are the AP details. So the AP that was used was an ASUS uh, GTAX 6000 AP. This is a Wi-Fi 6 4x4 AP. And this was set to 80 megahertz bandwidth and uh, the testing was done in 5 gigahertz. So the traffic profile uh, that was run was to all the 14 OFDMA clients, uh, we ran UDP uplink 1 Mbps traffic. And this was using voice access category. Okay, so we are basically trying to simulate uh, kind of voice traffic and the payload size that was used was 700 byte uh, frames. So 700 byte frames uh, with a throughput of 1 Mbps per client, right? So totally 14 Mbps across the OFDMA, 14 OFDMA clients. And then we had the Wi-Fi 5 client, right? That's 11 AC client. We were running full load UTB uplink, full load UDP uplink. This was using best effort traffic at 1500 byte payload size. Okay, so that's the traffic profile. Now let's look at the results. So these were the client side metrics that were captured just to confirm that all the clients connected at 80 megahertz and then the RSSI that was seen on uh, at all the clients and they are all two by two clients, right? Uh, so here are the results with OFDMA disabled on the AP. So we did have a knob on the ASUS AP to, you know, enable or disable OFDMA. So this is the uh, throughput that is seen by the uh, Wi-Fi 5 client, right? And this is the throughput that is seen by the 14 OFDMA clients together, right? So 14 Mbps. So we should see uh, about 14 Mbps, which we do see here, right? Uh, about 14 Mbps for the OFDMA cable clients. And this throughput for the Wi-Fi 5 client uh, is a measure of the unused airtime, right? So, and it's seeing somewhere, you know, about, you know, about 100 Mbps. There are some spikes which take it to like 350 Mbps maximum, right? But it is not able to sustain it, right? Uh, later, I will tell you why that is happening or what we observed here, right? It's it basically, it's not very stable. There are some spikes like this, but, you know, you can see that the average throughput is around, uh, you know, 110 Mbps, I think. Now, the same test when repeated with OFDMA enabled looks like this, right? So, we are seeing about 500 Mbps throughput for the Wi-Fi 5 client and still we do see the same 14 Mbps uh, throughput for the OFDMA cable client. So the traffic to the OFDMA cable clients is going as you know normally and without any disruption while the Wi-Fi 5 client is able to now achieve a significantly higher throughput. So this clearly shows that now the OFDMA traffic is consuming much lesser airtime. So there is more airtime available for the Wi-Fi 5 client to use and that is seen by the throughput. Right. And we also, by the way, confirmed that OFDMA is actually happening right? Uh, in multiple waves. Uh, we were able to look at some counters from the AP to infer the how many trigger frames are being sent. Um, and we also actually use a sniffer to capture the uh, basic trigger frames. And here is a sample of the basic trigger frame that was captured. So here we can see uh, RU242 being assigned to four different clients here. Right. So OFDMA is actually happening. Okay. Now here is a summary of all the results put together. So OFDMA disabled, we got about 110 Mbps. OFDMA enabled is about 540 Mbps. The throughput to all the OFDMA cable clients pretty much stays the same, which is 14 Mbps. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. So hopefully you got a good idea about how to measure the OFDMA gains. And you know we can hopefully put a full stop to this question of whether there is OFDMA gain or not, right? We do see significant OFDMA gains, as you can see from the results here. Now, one thing I would like to say is, uh, you know, please don't try to, uh, you know, look for this exact multiple of gain. Like this looks like, like four times throughput, right? When you try to repeat this test, maybe you might see lesser gain, but definitely you will see gains. I think that the key takeaway is, is not that there is OFDMA gives four times throughput or five times throughput. The key message is that there is uh, benefits with OFDMA, right? And it's just that we have to uh, craft the right test case and use the right test tools to see that uh, gains. Now, one final remark about, uh, you know, why this OFDMA disabled uh, throughput is not very, very uh, stable here. So one thing is on um, post-processing all the logs uh, from the sniffers and all, what I could observe is that the OFDMA capable clients are definitely experiencing quite a bit of collisions. Now, note that this is all voice access category, right? And as you know, voice access category has aggressive contention window parameters. So they do experience a lot of collision and that is causing the rate adaptation on these clients 
to kind of reduce the rate and we could actually see that from the sniffer logs so that is why you know you see this instantaneous spikes going up to 350 right but it's not able to sustain it because you know very quickly it sees a lot of collisions and then that causes the rate to kind of stumble right so the rate adaptation is really uh, you know basically causing these fluctuations okay so basically because of that the air time utilized is kind of uh, fluctuating quite a bit and that is reflected in the throughput for the wi-fi client okay so that's a little insight i wanted to share whereas you don't see this behavior we, or we didn't see this behavior in the way of the enable case we could see that the rates were pretty stable right uh, the collisions also we could see were significantly reduced okay thank you for your time